Hi, this is a brief tutorial on how to use Blockbench and CPM to make your origins in Minecraft a little bit more special. I think it's always interesting to have a Minecraft server with customizable player models and to make things a little more interesting if, say, you are an Elytrian origin where you have customized wings. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First, how to do this, we're going to use a program called Blockbench. You might have heard of it before, you might not have, but it's the easiest way to make these sorts of models. There is a version to do this in-game, however, I don't find it very easy to work with. I find Blockbench a lot easier. Now, to do this, we're going to need a plugin because this customizable player models option is not an original option that comes with this. What you're going to need is a plugin. Now, this will be linked in the description below, but what you need to do is go to this GitHub page and copy this URL right here. Make sure you have that copied. You go here into Files, Plugin, and then there's these two options up here near the top. Load plugin from URL. You're going to paste it into here. Just hit confirm. I already have it downloaded, so I don't need it, but it'll allow you to make a customizable player bottom model in here. So we start this up. I'd recommend just leave everything the same. You can click Slim or, Slim or Steve for this. I'll just do Slim. And here we have just the opening of what we have in CPM. So I'm going to break things down for you because it's a little confusing if you're not used to this. So how does this work? So when you're doing this, each one of these folders on the side is linked to, to a section of your body. You can control the size of it and the origin point and where it walks from, but I recommend if you're doing something with origins, just leave everything the same. This skin file is where everything is stored. Let's say let's load this as a skin. So you can hit change file if you right click. I'll just grab my normal skin. Now, as you can see, uh, the top layer is missing. You don't know where that goes, so I'm gonna show you how to add that in. You can add it yourself, but like that's excessive. You don't have to. So how to add it is you go into click this CPM, add parts, second layer. Now you have to make sure you apply the textures to these, otherwise you don't have anything. So just go ahead and apply the texture. Hello. All right, so now that we have our top layer all set up, you wanna make sure you have this, otherwise, uh, your top layer will not appear in game. Worst case scenario, I will also leave uh, a download to just a base of this so you don't have to do anything. Uh, that may be easier, but honestly, it's easier to know how to do this yourself just in case. Let's say we want to make an Elytrian origin or Elytrian. I don't know how to say it. I say Elytrian. Let's say we want to make a custom wing skin for an Elytrian. So, how do we do that? First, we go into CPM Add Parts Elytra. This will add it automatically into your CPM file, so you don't have to do any hassles, and it has just a built-in texture, so it's easy. I'd recommend just leaving this as is, because it is an Elytra that stays in the model. I recommend just leaving this as is. You can go into Paint and Edit, and in here, you can edit this as you please. Say you want to have, like, I don't know, bones. <laughs> I'm just going to load a file, just for now, for ease of access. Okay, so we have custom textures for the wings all set. So how does this work in-game? So to set this up, what we're going to do is hit File, Export Customizable Player Project. This may pop up. Here's what you do. Look at your files. Auto fix this. This will be your skin. Whatever you loaded in as your skin file, that's going to be the skin. Whatever you loaded in as your Elytra file, whether it's called Elytra or not, just fix it so that it is Elytra. You can hit confirm. Now we're going to make sure we hit save, which I'll just name this as null Elytran. So it is, is a CPM project. From here, what we're going to do we're gonna look for where it is in our files. We're just gonna move it into our project folder. So basically, if you're using this in plain Minecraft, this will be in your .minecraft folder. If you're using it in, let's say, CurseForge or ModRenth, this will be in the profile folder for whatever save you have. In here, you're going to hit new folder and you're going to name it player underscore models, right? This is where this will live. You don't have to touch anything else the rest in this, but I would recommend saving your block bench model just in case. Now that that's all done, we're going to open up our Minecraft version and I'll show you how to load it. All right, so we're here in Minecraft. So this is the starting screen. What you're gonna wanna hit is open skin editor. 
There are some links for everything, probably just leave this all the same, don't touch it. If you get this, you can change your GUI scale. Luckily, since we're not modeling in CPM, we don't have to worry about this. Because all of our modeling is done, you do not have to worry about your GUI scale being too big. So, from here, we're gonna hit File, Load, Player Models, the Elytria and CPM project, and there we go. You're gonna notice that everything looks the normal. You don't see anything. This is okay. So what we're going to do is export. Make sure that if you're using a slim skin, you click the slim edit. So everything on this page, what it does is it's going to save this to your skin file. It's going to save what you have made with your model to the skins file itself. This way you can use it on servers with ease of access and it's easy to load in. You can choose to change the vanilla skin if you want it to appear differently to other people. If you're just using your base skin with, a with an extra elytra, you don't have to change anything. You're gonna hit export and upload. This uploads it to M Planet Minecraft. This will change your current skin. So just hit okay. You can hit okay here. It's pasting and then it's done, it's uploaded. So we're gonna go test this in game. First, before we test it in game, you have to make sure to hit save. Then we can test in game. All right, so since we set this up for an Elytrian, I'm just gonna pick up the Elytrian origin, hit select, hit F5. And even though I have not changed the actual Elytra files in game, I now have the Elytrian origin with custom wings. This will also display on other people's servers if you are using CPM. The benefit of using this way of uploading with CPM is that everyone can see it on a server and they don't need to have your file. That's like the downside I find with, mo with mods like Figura is that you have to upload to a paste site. This does it automatically through uploads. So now that you've done this, you can hit exit. You don't have to worry about it. In fact, next time you open up your, mo your game, you can hit open recent, null Elytri and CPM project, same project as ever. You may have to hit save again, but you can hit exit and then it'll work on game. As long as you're still using that same base skin, you should be okay. Make sure that if this has saved as a skin, that you've saved it in your Minecraft launcher just for ease of access so that you can actually do this open recent. Okay, so what if you want to make a full custom model? What if you want to make a model that has a tail? Say you're a fox and you want a tail. Well, here's how we do this. The best way I recommend to make a tail in Minecraft with CPM is you have to go off the body. You want this to stay on the body so that it focuses with your body. Because we all know that our tailbone is right here on the spine, right on our butt. That's where your tail should be. Now block bench is pretty easy with how to model because it's just cubes. So if you know how to do cube editing, it's fairly easy. Let's say, let's just do a cat tail for now because it'll be very easy because I can just do one line. What's important when you're doing a tail is you have to make sure that pivot point is right there at the top of this, like on the butt, so that it actually will pivot correctly when we're doing animations because otherwise it will swing weirdly. To make it a little normal, we'll go like that. Now, how do we apply a texture to this? So here's how we do it. You can go to this cube, add texture skin, and you can move it around. Now, as you may see, this is a little too big for this model, for this current skin, because everything will cover up and fit everything else. There isn't any space currently on this file, but allow me to put in this texture. So what can we do about that? Open up a different art program. I recommend using a free art program, whether this be something like Medibang, whether it be Clip Studio Paint, Fire Alpaca, whatever your tool of choice is. We're gonna open up our skin file. To make sure we can actually fit the tail texture in, what we're going to do is we're going to double the width of this. This just allows us to work with enough space, make sure that Java can still read the texture file. Save this independently as a different file so that you know where it is. I'm just gonna name it as tail. We're gonna change the skin texture here. Now, as you can see, things got messed up. How do we avoid this? It's a little excessive, but what you're gonna do, UV mode per face UV on every single one of these. This is how we can avoid this. Now we will change our file to this tail. We're gonna go up here. We're gonna hit texture size 1.28. 
And there we go. Everything is tech is fixed. Texture, we're just gonna hit blank, because what happened to my cube? Oh, my cube reset. Okay. This is why you save. <laughs> and that should be good enough size. So then we will texture our tail. Move this over. It can be anywhere here as long as it is not in that skin area. So I recommend hiding everything besides what you're working on. When it's something like this, you want to make sure that you're only looking at this one section. So for ease right now, we're just gonna paint everything this one color and then add a little shading just so it's not super boring. Again, I want to say this is a very quick tutorial, so it's not gonna go super in depth on everything. We now have a tail texture. Make sure you bring back all of your files again. I'm gonna go back here and rotate it again so that it's curved. All right, this can work in game. Where it is currently, it can work in game. But if you have a tail, it's like, you don't want to just have it be boring to have it just like sit there because it's not gonna do anything. So here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna add a new animation. We're gonna hit this to loop. Uh, we are going to go to global. This will basically give you a idle animation for everything. There are a lot of animation types that you can go into. If you're good at animation and you know how to do these sorts of things, you can look into all of these and like make a bunch of different uh, gestures and poses and everything. But for easy access, we're just gonna do global and we're just gonna do like, I'm just gonna name this as an idle thing, right? So in this timeline, this is where everything is. It's important that we have our actual folders pivot point also matching where we have the tails pivot point. Otherwise, pivoting is going to look a little weird because this is like your anchor. This is where the bone is. We're going to go with rotation because everything should say that one point. Let's say two seconds overall. And we're going to also make sure that there's a key point right there so it goes back. I'd say at 1.5, you can move it a little to the left here. And then at 1.1, you can move it a little to the right here. You can get a base animation, but going back and forth. But it's a little janky, it's a little too rigid. So, we're gonna go select all of these. And we are gonna go here, instead of linear, we're gonna hit Bezier. So what does Bezier do? This allows you to edit a graph on this. It's a little confusing, I get it, but here's what we do. We're gonna make these line up so it makes one big line. That's the benefit of having this loop, is it will just make a big line. Make sure that these line up. These can go a little bit further out, just so it's a little smoother. And just with a little tweaking, it already looks a little bit better. So if you have just like a plain old tail, you can leave it as that. If you have a few more bones in there, say that we split this in half, like down the center, you could also make that end swish a little more and so that it moves a little more. Make sure when you have your animations done, you're gonna go here and save. Now in here, you're going to want to save it as, let's say, null test. That'll save a whole JSON file that'll have your animations to make sure that they actually stay when you're exporting. You can hit export CPM, again, just hit skin. For example, I'm gonna pull up another uh, model that I've done in the past for a phantom. So this is a model that I've made in the past for a phantom on an origin server. I added small wings, I added a whole bony tail, I added glasses. There's even something you can do in CPM to make your eyes glow. I think I have it here. As you can see here on this texture, uh, I'll zoom in a bit. The eyes are separate from the face. They're supposed to glow green. When you bring this in the game, these are unaffected by lighting. Like how you see a biter, their eyes are not affected by lighting. There's a way to do that with CPM. You can add glowing eyes. So how that's done here is if we zoom on out, we're gonna select everything. So this one right here, I'd recommend naming these. I'm horrible at naming everything. But this here is the glowing eyes. As you can see, it's ticked on here. This allows for emissive textures. This allows these to glow. 
These have to be a fully transparent thing on a black background for what you want to glow. Otherwise, it's not going to work as well. But it allows for these glowing eyes for them to uh, kind of stand out in the night, which is fun if you're a phantom. Everything else looks exactly the same except for this. For the animation, I have a few that I've done for this tale. For our standing animation, as I just showed you, like I said, you can break up the joints a little bit further down so that that base standing animation is a little more interesting. With sneaking, I slowed it down and made it wiggle just a little bit. Same with the sneak walking, just a little bit more motion. With running, I like to make sure that the tail moves in circles. I think it makes it a little more visually interesting to look at. Walking can be fun. Now, if you wanna add an idle animation, what we do, uh, just a general idle thing that can happen, just to add a little bit of visual intrigue. I think I add a wing stretch in back here. Yes, I do, okay. So to add these base animations, what you do, properties, priority two, make sure they're on loop, because otherwise uh, they will just happen once and they'll never happen again and you want them to happen. <laughs> this be a global animation, priority two, while the standing, prior properties, priority zero, or priority one. It should also say additive, because this adds on to other animations. So that's the basic rundown of things. Sorry I can't show you like the full basics of how to run everything down on making a model here. It is a little in depth and I don't have the time for that. But if you ever have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. You can message me. I'll be able to field them if you need any help with figuring out how things like glasses work. Uh, I'm glad to help. Just leave some comments. I'll see what I can do. If I end up making more videos talking about this sort of stuff, then hopefully uh, we can cover what you think will be helpful to know. Uh, and I can go a little more in depth into certain things, but this is just a base overview of how to do everything. Running things in CPM works the same as the process I taught you before. Yeah, I hope you've had fun. I hope you learned something. I hope you can have fun making CPM models because I have a lot of fun with it. So I hope you enjoy.